the government can only do so much if confidence completely falls apart and there's mass withdrawals. We saw it start to shake. We saw some big banks come in and try to help. But to be honest with you, the banking system is based on confidence. Hey folks, Colin Richards here. I'm president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I'm privileged to be talking to you today on the subject of where do I put my cash? As you know, we've got a lot going on in the world today, and my team of advisors and I have been meeting with people just like you who are concerned that events out of your control are going to mess up your retirement. So what we're doing is we're coming alongside of you and we're helping you build a comprehensive financial plan, a plan to achieve financial independence so you can retire without worry and do amazing things with the resources God has entrusted to you. So today we're going to talk about this simple question as I meet with clients, as people are asking my advice every day, hey, Colin, in the light of what's gone on with the banks, where should I put my cash? So let's start, first of all, with how we got here, right? So Silicon Valley Bank, just a couple of months ago, kind of started things off, right? A run occurred, and many, many of their deposits were particularly with companies that were uninsured. As you know, there's a limitation on deposit insurance from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation of $250,000. Uh, that generally is um, per individual number or employment number. In other words, uh, you could have uh, multiple accounts, but if they're all in your name under your Social Security number, then the aggregate will be insured up to the 250000 I think more people know that now than before the banking crisis. Sock that away in your mind and keep that in your head. Some of you have fled the insecurity of the markets recently and dumped a lot of cash into the bank. The problem is if you're over those FDIC limits, there's no guarantee that you'll be safe. Now, so far, the federal government has come alongside and said, everybody's going to be safe. Everybody's going to be safe. But you and I both know that that's a confidence question, right? The government can only do so much if confidence completely falls apart and there's mass withdrawals. We saw it start to shake. We saw some big banks come in and try to help. But to be honest with you, the banking system is based on confidence. So if you're going to be backed by FDIC, divide your accounts up amongst multiple um, Social Security numbers, multiple employer identification numbers, if you're a business owner or if you have trusts, uh, multiple banks. So that if you have a significant amount of cash and you're going to be over those limits, you know you'll be fully covered. For me personally, I use about three different banks, three different banks to make sure that cash that I need on hand to keep my business strong and solvent is well insured. And, of course, I'm focused on big banks uh, that are far less likely to have the exposure of a Silicon Valley bank where so much of its deposits were uninsured. So where do you put your cash now? Some of you are concerned and you want to have some cash on hand. Well, let me start by first of all talking about how much cash, okay? For most of you, it's going to be pretty um, pretty clear that the best amount to set aside is three to six months of your expenses. Whether you're working or whether you're retired, this is, a, this is not original to us at Lord & Richards, but it is important if you're working to have a reserve to draw on a short-term money that you can pull in between jobs. If it makes you feel better to have nine or 12 months, that's fine, but recognize that there's three things you can emphasize, three things you can compromise, and you can't get them all. You can emphasize safety. Banks are safe if you stay within your FDIC limits. You can emphasize liquidity. Banks are liquid. You can take your money out, but growth is not all that hot, right? Growth is not all that hot. And if you put too much money there, you're going to find yourself lagging behind this incredible inflation we've been experiencing. Has it been remarkable? We we have some uh, some training tables in our offices that we need to get out of the way, make room for new employee workstations, and uh, this is a common problem amongst business owners. Is hey, when I when I outgrow my furniture, I need to sell it. I need to get rid of it. 
I looked up the cost of that furniture today, and it is four times what we paid for it in 2018. Four times as much for the same tables that we purchased. So many of you have been hit by this, and stashing all your money in cash is not going to help you. It's going to actually hurt you as the value of your money erodes by 5 or 6 or 7%, depending on where we are at any given moment. Even if inflation levels return to normal, that's still like rust pulling down the value of your money. And of course, I know you're telling me, well, Colin, I'm not sure where to put it safe and growing. We're going to get that into that in our next segment on where do I put my midterm and long-term money. That's going to be a different solution. But for right now, limit this amount of cash. Emphasize safety emphasize liquidity. So you could put it in the bank, you could put it in money markets, you can put it in savings accounts, you can put it in very short-term CDs, and so forth. But on the growth side, recognize you're not going to get that much growth. Even with today's higher rates because of the Fed raising rates, uh, you're still only looking at three or four or maybe a little bit more than that. Right now, we're experiencing a situation where shorter-term money is... Uh, yielding higher than longer term money. You can actually get a higher rate on a simple savings account than some longer term CDs. That's called a yield curve inversion. It always signals a problem. It says we're in trouble. It's uh, not always a lagging indicator. Sometimes it occurs before things really fall apart and sometimes it fall, uh, occurs after. So where do we put that money? Again, banks, short term savings, very short-term CDs, money market. And for businesses, diversify your cash across multiple banks and hopefully multiple entities. If you have multiple entities represented in your business, such as LLCs, uh, S corporations, C corporations, uh, and so forth, sole proprietorship. So whatever you do, don't pile it all in one bank over the FDIC limits. Keep yourself covered. But this is money that I would call emergency money. For a business, that's a lot more. For an individual, three to six months. For a business, three to six months cash also. So that's usually going to be quite a bit more money than just a person's expenses. That's that business expenses. Some companies have run their cash out even further and can float their operations for nine months or a whole year without revenue. So that may be right now. Uh, a critical need then to get some of that money into some CDs and interest-bearing accounts, not just typical savings and checking. So that's where we're going to put our cash, but keep it limited, folks. That's just our first kind of money. We've got two more to talk about, and we're going to address those in our next segment. In the meantime, those of you who are concerned about what's going on in our banking system, our monetary system, know that at Lord & Richards, we're counseling and helping people just like you every single day to achieve financial independence and to retire without worry. It's a complimentary visit right in our beautiful offices. We would love to help you. It just takes a simple phone call.